Hello and welcome back, most illustrious members of the detail. I'm your host, D, also known as MTF Doom, and today it kind of snuck up on me. I did not realize the Living Tribunal was coming out, but I got some deck techs for you. I hope you enjoy. into it as always uh, you can help support the channel by liking subscribing commenting uh we're hoping to hit 500 subscribers by i don't know soon it's it's a uh, pride month support support the trans homies by subscribing to this channel specifically and also uh give money to trans people uh if you are able to this month okay the living tribunal is a six six uh, ongoing, split your total power evenly among all locations. That's cool. That's cool as hell. Um, the card is not a big bad, which means spending 6,000 tokens on it was strictly wrong. But as you can see, I still got uh, 420 tokens up there. Uh, 4,200, but you know, it's the weed number, Lamau. So um, I just kind of don't care. I just, I just plum don't care. I want to play the stupid card, and this is how I play this game, by playing the stupid cards I want to play. So let's get into the five decks I got. Um, they're cool. This is So this is the least... This is the one I think I'm least interested in, but um, I think this, this card might bring somewhat of a return to form for Shuri. The problem being you can't effectively Taskmaster. It's... It creates you know what actually let's on the fly here let's do this we should actually be playing taskmaster okay so the idea for me is that you now have a multi-layered uh fast you have multi facets of attack that you did not have previously um you had shuri into red skull into taskmaster that was always acceptable but um, now, if your opponent's like limiting where you can play to, you have the out of pl just playing living, <laughs> living, living tribunal to spread the power around and and see what sticks. You know, um, it's very bad. You don't want tribunal to be your actual Shuri hit. You still really do want that to be Red Skull. Um, but this just gives you the opportunity to go like, okay, Red Skull on five, and then either. Taskmaster or Tribunal on six. Um, we lose a little bit in our one slot. Mm, Taskmaster is sort of at his best when you are able to deploy him plus like Titania. Because in general, at that point in the game, at on six, you'll be ahead in one lane really far because of Shuri. But like not necessarily. You'll usually be losing two other lanes. So it's a, it's a good way to like just jump ahead and if Titan if your opponent has priority and Titania is the last card you play it'll you you know it'll always stay on your side that's like the problem with Titania but you can mitigate that in this deck so we are we're missing out on that um Namor and Crossbones are both a little loose but it goes with the same kind of thing it's like if we don't have exactly Shuri or Wave we need ways to just deploy as much power as possible and so, like, this is a 411, so it just deploys a lot, a lot, a lot of power, and then your opponent might not see the Tribunal coming on 6, and, and that, there's just a lot of, like, you gain a lot of points doing things your opponents don't expect, as long as those things are still powerful. That's, I try to make that clear with all my decks, so, um, but this one, this one, I, I'm also just, like, not as robust with shuri uh i i didn't get her until she dropped to pool three at which point she was nerfed so i didn't really play her um like at almost at all you can see she's still like green bordered um I, she could be blue though but she's not um so this is this is the one uh i'm least comfortable and confident with and the one i'm probably not going to play myself at least to start but it is something I want to play around with because I haven't gotten to play Shuri and I think this could be a home for her so this is almost more a jumping off point to give ideas to some other people uh you the beautiful viewer 
most illustrious uh, to maybe make this deck work and get back to me in Discord, which we did a lot of today. It was great. Crack, crack's been really useful uh, bouncing ideas off. <laughs> All right, um, then we got the one I'm most excited for. Uh, this is tied. So this deck, um, Tribunal actually kind of got nerfed in the negative list because it was a it was a six four I think when it got revealed or like maybe even less than that. But the point is, uh, as a six six, it's better as a card in a, in some ways, but it's worse as a negative hit. So. We're not really worried about whether or not we hit it with negative. Um, we're worried if we hit it with Bast, but honestly, we're going to counteract that with, like, if we hit Iron Man or Mystique <laughs> uh, with Bast or negative, we're pretty happy. You you know the deal, right? Like, um, in general, in the negative Surfer Brood list, uh, you're going to auto-win the Brood lane because it's, like, you know, this is worth 9 15 power if you end up surfering as well so it's just like yeah it's like one card that's worth 15 power it's really hard for your opponent to like get ahead of that so usually like fairly often they'll kind of just give it up and if you follow it up with like a wolfsbane it's just it's so much power because this you know the brood's auto filled and then the wolfsbane just gets it, it's incredible right it's not that hard to stack a shitload of power right You've all seen it. Like, you could go Iron Man and Mystique in the same lane. That's usually really bad. But if you follow it with a Tribunal, it's really good. There's also the, the sneakiness. So normally, you, the other list you're going to see, like, Tribunal is the 6-drop. You're kind of locked to it. Like, it's, you know, the, the best decks that we're going to put together and play are going to be ones that it's not obvious that Tribunal is the play. And we even have... a you know, some of our decks where there are options, Tribunal or X, um, this deck gets around that limitation of, like, basically telegraphing that you might play Tribunal by being able to, like, hold a zero-cost Iron Man to go along with it, and a lot of the time, that's enough for your opponent to just not know what the hell you're doing, and, you know, I mean, maybe not right now, <laughs> I assume just like high Evo, it's going to be uh, tribunals all the way down for at least a couple of days. But this is for when the dust settles, I suppose. <laughs> um, this is going to be. I'm really glad that they're given they're giving my boy uh, negative another lease on life with this card because <laughs> um, a negative has not been great for a while. But I, I think I think this deck. I mean, double double tribunal and trouble is gonna be that's what i should have named the fucking deck all right this deck's gonna be sick i'm i'm almost certain of it then we've got i mean lockjaw right like what's what could be better oh wait you know what could be better is me including the right cards uh originally we also had dracula in here so infinite made more sense but i don't i don't like infinite on only as only a lockjaw hit so I want to put something else here. Um, what are some other good uh, Lacanimous Jaw hits? Can't be Destroyer. Sure can't be Destroyer. It could just be Magneto. It could totally just be Magneto. Um, this gives you the opportunity to move. Uh, Magneto is probably actually quite good. So the thing is, I think with a lot of people, and where my mind went specifically when I first saw tribunal and when i started uh theorizing on these decks was that you just wanted to maximize your power so that it evened out to higher than your opponents but the thing is they still have to play in a way that lets you beat those numbers right and sometimes they won't like sometimes they'll be ahead really really far in two lanes and the evening out will win you one lane but it'll lose you another magneto and you'll see i include polaris for the same reason just gives you the opportunity to like move you, you can like uneven their lanes while yours get evened out um especially in this list where you're able to just like high roll into it off a lockjaw um and just get value off that and and probably win games that you weren't going to win otherwise um so you, you that's something to keep in mind with this one uh and in general i think the 
the idea that most people have in their head, and one of the one of the decks we're gonna cover is like this, is that you just have to go as tall as you can. Like, you know, just just stack all the power you can in one lane and let Tribunal sort it out <laughs> for you. And I, I think that that's like a fine plan in some ways, but I think it's gonna lose you uh, enough games that you're gonna start including Magneto or Polaris in decks where Magneto doesn't make sense. Cause like in a lot of decks, you can't actually play more than one six drop, like certainly unless you're playing magic or whatever, but this deck you can. So I think you should, I think Magneto actually should have been here maybe instead of infinite from the beginning. Um, and then we have, I think high Evo and Hulk are like good enough. Cause this is just an infinite that you can also play like a normal card. Um, and the fact that you're already playing Wasp is just a bonus. And the fact that you can shuffle away High Evo on Lockjaw is a bonus. I I like the Lockjaw Evo decks. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, and then Nightcrawler is good. If you happen to low roll by putting like Wasp into the Lockjaw lane and you get Nightcrawler out of the Lockjaw lane, you could just move Nightcrawler and then get your, your chance again. So you still like kind of just came out even, uh, which I, I value. I, I feel like a lot of these lists end up really, really greedy and they don't include, they literally just include Wasp, Thor, like the, the hammer, the Mjolnir and Jubilee as they're like lockjaw hits. And they're just like, yep, everything else just comes out of lockjaw. Nothing else goes in. I think that's a little greedy. And I think that Nightcrawler is the card that I like to counteract that because it gives you kind of the best of both worlds. It gives you another not worst hit you could have and another thing to feed lockjaw and so yeah I, if you're building a lockjaw deck highly consider nightcrawler going forward um we're getting into the big ones <laughs> so i call this one no decisions needed <laughs> uh this is the one that i think it is going to play the most like what i outlined two decks ago of just like no, that's not true. The next deck's going to play like that. Of just being like, yeah, you just rely on the fact that the Living Tribunal evens out the numbers. <laughs> you don't really have to make a lot of choices. <laughs> you just like, like, you just play cards and you let Tribunal sort them out, you know? <laughs> um, the big ones here are, I I am bad at Professor X. And I mean, we're including Gamora because it's a sick variant and we want another five that's very impactful. But basically what we're doing here is trying to limit our opponent's ability to put power into lanes via Storm, Spider-Man, Professor X, um, so that we, when we tribunal, like, you know, if, if they play something into the flooded lane or the flooding on four after you storm, they might think they're safe and then you tribunal and they're like, I guess I'll die. Uh, and that's kind of what we're going for. I'm really bad at calling the Professor X or like trying to get in my opponent's head. So I'm including Daredevil. But if you're better about Professor X and Gamora than me and, and Spider-Man, I assume as well. Uh, I, I feel like I have an easier time reading the Spider-Man, but I don't know. I, I Maybe I'm making that up. Um if you're better at all this than me, you don't have to include Daredevil, but I'm bad at it. So I'm including Daredevil. Uh, this is also the deck where I realize that I want Polaris because I want to like lock out two lanes and make them fight me in one lane thinking that like th having them think, Oh, well I can get way ahead of them in this lane and I'm a little bit ahead in that one so I can win. And then you just drop the tribunal and you're like, yep, you win this middle lane by a billion, billion points. But I win the other two now. <laughs> so uh, Polaris like helps with that. It can also just help fill up. Like if you lock down two lanes or there's already one hard to get into lane and you flood the other one, Polaris can like really, you know, bind them on, on the plays they can make by filling up the last remaining lane. And I value that a lot. Also fuck Galactus. <laughs> and that this, this also helps with that. Um, and then finally... Uh, win big or try dying. So this is just a spectrum ongoing list in a lot of ways. Um, Iron Lad. So 
Iron Lad only has one hit, one bad hit, but it's a really bad hit. It's like an exceptionally bad hit. It's Ebony Maw. And I almost don't know if I include Ebony Maw, but if you don't know, you can put Ebony Maw under Invisible Woman and it'll let you keep playing cards uh, unless Invisible Woman ends up getting um, silenced, at which point at the end of that turn, Ebony Maw will reveal his ongoing will take place and you can no longer play cards there. The thing is, Ebony Maw kind of works anyway. If you just like play him out and your opponent's like, okay, well, I only have to get ahead of a seven in that lane. Like Claw, Mr. Fantastic, Omega Red, and Living Tribunal all give you the opportunity to add power in a way that your opponent was not expecting. And I think that might be worth it, even though the downside of like on turn four, you hit Iron Lad, he locks you out of the lane that you play him in, and then you know you're drawing a, a completely dead card on five is pretty bad. Is it bad enough? You know what? I think I might have talked myself uh, directly into this. You know what we're going to do? Just because I have, I have literally not played with this at all. This is a one cost ongoing that saves your at least your tribunal from getting um, Enchantress. <laughs> So let's play Ghost here. I've I've talked myself into it. Let's play Ghost instead. Um, yeah, everything else here is just good. Like you know, everything else. This this is the deck that I think probably will have actually kind of the most legs, because it has multiple options for six drops in Spectrum and Living Tribunal, and so depending on how the game has shaken out, you can decide if you want to go uh, evenly spaced among all locations or if you like where your power is and you just want to pump it up a little bit just give it a little boop, boop, a little pump a little boop, boop, boop. Um, you can make that choice on the fly and get better results uh, out of your gameplay for it so um, that's it that's it those are that's five we powered through them because it is almost midnight here <laughs> like I said um, what are your thoughts on this fucking card i'm probably gonna stream tomorrow you know i think i'm gonna treat myself and go and do a little streamy stream what are your thoughts on living tribunal are you uh do any of these look good am i missing something is there some real d there's this really obvious thing uh one of the things i didn't want to do uh you don't want to include just just so you're aware so we're on the same page you in general don't really want to include uh, things that give your opponent negative power. Uh, if you can help it, you want to focus on overstatted things on your side that, that you'll get a slightly, I, I believe you will get a slightly better return on your, your win percentage. Cause I, I kind of wanted to try like a Viper, uh, giving them tribunal or something, uh, as well as like, you know, hood, uh, sentry, uh, the goblins thought it would be funny but i think it's too cute right you'd have to like wave into living tribunal then viper it over to them like preferably probably on turn six so they didn't see it coming and then their power gets split and you can just overpower that i i still want to play with that but it made me realize how bad like the goblins are because like they don't advance your game plan at all when you're trying to split your power evenly right you understand what i'm saying so yeah i don't know that's probably a deck to come but thank you so much for watching i hope you find this content elucidating enlightening or enriching uh, i hope that you have a great night at this point and i will see you all tomorrow or later today if i record a fucking third video for the day but i'm probably not gonna because uh the day only has 27 minutes left in it all right bye